talk is about a money split. Big money. Hard forks are such an ugly phenomenon and they create a problem called replay attack. Three conditions need to be met before a replay attack can happen. I'll explain these conditions in this video. When the chains are forking, it's a big drama, almost like when celebrities are splitting. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. These past Bitcoin and Ethereum forks I will introduce next were way more intense compared to any celebrity splits. You're smart. You'll play along with me. You're not. It goes rough on everybody. In July of 2016, Ethereum influencers made amends and removed $50 million hack transaction from the original chain, leaving the unaltered chain and part of the community behind. This unaltered Ethereum state now is named Ethereum Classic and even though it was going fairly strong in early days after fork, now it's just a shell of its old glory. That's a lot of money. The other major fork happened in 2017 when a group colloquially called Big Blockers forked away from Bitcoin, creating new cryptocurrency, Bitcoin Cash. All they wanted was to control Bitcoin and they couldn't do that without forking out their version. They subsequently forked again and again and again, almost each time when there was an infight between main influencers. So to replay attack happen, one needs to operate post fork. That's our First condition. Okay, but what is replay attack? To understand it, here is the layout of very basic Bitcoin transaction and its elements. First of all, there needs to be something we are spending. On Bitcoin, we are all spending UTXOs, short for unspent transaction outputs. So the coins that weren't yet spent. We need to link these UTXOs, they will later on become our inputs we also have to add the recipients, this will become our outputs. Usually there is a single recipient and a change address controlled by us, so whoever is sending the transaction. There are a few other key elements like amounts specified for these recipients, the difference is calculated to be transaction fees, raw transaction like that needs to be signed by private key and signed transaction can be included in a block. And here comes our replay attack. Let's imagine our conditions. To replay attack happen, we need a fork. So Mr. Peter McGrighty is making new Bitcoin fork and he called it Bitcoin Better. Bitcoin chain is still called Bitcoin, but there is a new chain that just forked, Bitcoin Better, and it has some small economic traction. Maybe not that small, let's assume the Bitcoin Better price is $1,000 after the split. Just after the fork happened, Alice would like to send Bob two bitcoins on Bitcoin chain. So her wallet is creating a row transaction, signs with her key and publishes in peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin layer. Obviously, Alice could do it manually, but fortunately our wallets are some sort of robots that do all this work for us in the background. Unfortunately, the Bob in our example, the recipient, is sort of a dick and he sees that Bitcoin Better coins are worth $1,000 each. So he publishes the exact same transaction on Bitcoin Better chain and assuming that Bitcoin Better doesn't have replay protection built in, he gets these two Bitcoin Better coins on a hard fork chain. It's all because he used the same transaction with the same valid signature of Alice's private key from the original Bitcoin chain. And things like that happened in past actually many, many, many times. So our third condition to replay attack happen is lack of replay protection. And replay protection is some type of defense mechanism built into the upcoming hard fork and it may be as simple as changing the format of raw transaction so the signed transaction from chain A would be invalid on chain B. But often in cases of these major hard forks, their influencers are so sure that it will prevail as a main chain that there is no replay protection built in. Arrogance of some people is just way stronger than the common sense. In cases like that, users can also defend themselves by spending all their outputs to themselves. Either on the original chain or the forked chain, both ways would work. 
Just look at it, as the coins are being spent to your own wallet, there is no way that attacker can replicate the same transaction and spend it on the other chain to himself. But this defense tactic is introducing some privacy risks, because by spending, usually, it means grouping UTXOs together to single address and letting everyone know that all these previously used addresses were your ownership. So if the next Bitcoin fork will happen, keep the guard high and be aware of potential risks. But as I'm recording this video in early 2022, fortunately, there is no upcoming fork on the horizon. That's it for today. Stay curious about Bitcoin and see you in another video. Bye.